So I'll be talking about tonight is quantum cryptography, which is a uh, spin on, on regular cryptography that's considered uh, uncrackable. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of talk about that the basis of, of quantum cryptography is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which means once you observe the state of a quantum uh, particle, it changes it fundamentally. So uh, actually, uh, one thing that when you can send photons with certain spins, the spins can be, as you can see here, the, the can be north south, or so north. Well, I'm gonna say north because that's uh, um, that's what that says, and then horizontal, or you can send it going diagonal, the one way diagonal, the other way diagonal. It's called, I think it's spin, the left time spin. Um, another thing you can do is you can put those those spins through filters, polarization filters, if, if you think of it like that. Um, there are two bases for, for going through uh, polarization filters. There's uh, the plus sign, which means that it can detect a, a north-south spin or east-west spin. Uh, or there's the X uh, basis right there, which can only detect uh, a one diagonal or the other diagonal spin. Uh, so if you send a, a, horizontal, a, a north-facing spin through a, a cross filter, an X filter, you're going to get 50% probability it's going to read one way or the other, so it's not going to be intelligible. Okay, so real quick, because I don't have a lot of time. The way this works is Alice is sending bits to uh, Bob. Uh, Alice sends uh, bits one, 0, 1, and what she does is she encodes a, uh, a positive uh, a north, say a north as a 0, or, or uh, a horizontal as a 1, and then the same thing with the diagonal uh, spin. You do a, a, a one way as a 1, one way as a 0. Um, she also, uh, so this is her bias right here is how she's how she's sending out the things. Bob, he receives these photons and he just applies a random basis to read them. So he, he guesses. He, he says, well, I'm going to do a, a, a plus filter here, a diagonal filter here, and I'm just going to find out what I read. Um, when he gets done, uh, he receives, uh, I don't want to see. Okay, so first look at this first column. How many, how many more minutes do I have? Two and a half. Okay. When he receives his first column, he, he ended up using the right filter. And he, he read correctly that it was a north uh, north facing bit. So he gets that as a, uh, he, he reads that as a uh, zero. Uh, for the next column, he, he, he picks the wrong filter on ra randomly. And he receives uh, this uh, 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 right top right facing uh, polarization there. Um, which is wrong, but that's okay, as we'll find out. So anyway, he goes, he goes through this and he, he gets a set of readings. Um, and then he tells, he sends Alice back, these, these are what I use to, to read all this. Alice says, and you can do this over an open channel. Alice says, well, no, this one's wrong, this one's wrong. The ones that you didn't choose, the ones that you chose wrong, are wrong. And, uh, and then he, Bob uses that filter, that, that result, to filter his results. And then he gets uh, a, the resulting bit thing. So it's only 50% efficient, um, if that makes sense. So is that, that's kind of how the whole process works. Now I'm going to explain why it's unbreakable. Uh, it's unbreakable because usually in cryptography, you, you have to intercept a transmission, and then you, uh, let's say for a traditional cryptography, you can break the hard math problem, right? Uh, with quantum cryptography, there's no possibility of intercepting it and still trans and reading it and still having the, the end user receive it. So, um, if someone is eavesdropping, we'll call her Eve, uh, if she's eavesdropping on the, on, the, on the conversation, due to the nature of the quantum bit, by, by her reading it, she's disturbing them through, through a way. Could she do a man in the middle where she pretends to be Bob, reads the message and forwards it? She, she can't do that because when she reads it, she, does, she has to pick the filter too. So she can't pick, so she'll read, so she'll get Bob's, uh, say this, this last line down here, she'll get uh, that reading out. And she won't know, though, how to resend them back without, uh, uh, without duplicating it correctly. Because she's only half right on half of these. So she, she can't do that by, uh, by man in the middle sort of thing. And that's really what makes it, because when she read it, she, she, only, she has a 50% chance of reading it right, essentially, right? I guess the right filter. What I'm not following is how Bob is special reading. I mean, I didn't see public key or anything. Was there key no, there's no public key. So how, how is Bob special and what that he can do? Well, he's at the end, I guess. But if I cut into the middle of the line, aren't I at the end of that cut line? You are at the end. But then Bob realizes, 
Oh, the, the problem with that is that if she tries to, Bob knows that someone's, someone's listening right away because he'll get garbage out when he tries to, to receive it. So he'll know right away, he'll send Alice something that says, I can't read it and I'm, I'm broken, stop communicating. <coughs> Disadvantage is really to use denial of service on this sort of thing, but usually you're doing it over optical wires that are hard to do manual sort of things. Okay, so that's real quick on photography. <laughs>